Once upon a time, in a cold November storm, when everything looked forlorn, a small errand girl with a bonnet box in her left hand and a big broken umbrella in her right trudged across the street. Her name was Lizzie. Almost there, almost there. Suddenly, a gust of wind turned her old umbrella inside out with a crash. Oh, no! Poor Lizzie wanted to sit down in the rain and cry, but there was no time for tears. So, dragging the dilapidated umbrella along, she spread her shawl over the bonnet boxes and hurried down the broad street. When Lizzie reached the house where she was to take the fine hat in the box, she took a sigh of relief. Yes. I bring the hat that Miss Bell is to try on. Come on in. Wait here and I will take this to Miss Bell. Lizzie sat in the waiting room, glad to warm her feet. She noticed the many blooming plants in the room whose fragrance attracted Lizzie. One particularly captivating little rose won her heart and made her walk up to it. It was so perfect, so like a rosy face smiling out from the green leaves that Lizzie could not keep her hands off it. And having smelt, touched, and kissed it, she suddenly broke the stem and hid it in her pocket. Then, frightened at what she had done, she crept back to her place in the hall and sat there, burdened with remorse. Miss Bell will see you now. When Lizzie reached Bell's room, she saw a pretty girl standing before a long mirror with a hat in her hand. Tell Madam Tiffany that I don't like it at all. Yes, miss. It was then that Bell noticed Lizzie's state and felt a sudden sense of pity for the girl. You look very cold. Come and sit by the fire for some time. I'm afraid I'll wet the pretty rug. My feet are sopping. So they are. Why didn't you wear rubber boots? I haven't got any. Belle stopped for a moment, thinking, and then said, You know what? I'll give you mine, as I never go out in wet weather. Marie, would you please bring them here? Oh, Thank you, miss. I'd like them ever so much, for my boots are old. I think your mother should get you warmer things. I haven't got a mother. I'm an orphan. Oh, I'm so sorry. Who takes care of you, then? I take care of myself. Madam Tiffany is kind to let me stay in her house, and sometimes she buys me books, too. And I love to read. You see, I have a dream. Belle said nothing, but sat among the soft cushions, looking soberly at Lizzie. What is your dream? I want to go to college, and one day, have my own house. At that moment, Marie returned with Belle's lunch and the boots. Here's your lunch, Miss Belle, and the boots. Thank you, Marie. Please, have some. You must be tired and hungry. But Lizzie could not take it. Covering her face, she began to cry for the kindness, rent her heart, and made the stolen flower a burden too heavy to be borne. Uh, uh, what happened? Have I been rude? Oh, no, you have been very kind. It is me who has not done good. And then, taking out the crumpled rose, she confessed her fault with many tears. Don't feel so much about such a little thing as that. I'll give you as many roses as you want, for I know you are a good girl. <laughs> Thank you. Let me go get the flowers. Meanwhile, tuck as much cake and cookies into your pocket as it will hold. When Belle came back with a handful of roses, she found Lizzie absorbed in eating a sponge cake in a blissful sort of waking dream. Here, they are yours. They are lovely. And 
and I will take the hat. It is not worth fussing about. I hope you achieve your dream. Now, if you will excuse me, I need to go get ready for my dance class. And, oh, do put on the boots. Thank you. You are the kindest. It's nothing. The rain poured. The wind blew. The sparrows on the park railing chirped diversively. As a happy Lizzie limped away in the big boots, her eyes held lovingly over the bright bouquet that was her treasure in that moment. Lizzie didn't know then that the roses were going to change her life forever. Eric, I know I shall like it. Your taste is so good, and you know what suits me so well. I hope, Lizzie, for they say that a girl's first ball dress is a grand affair, especially when the event is held in honor of the famous painter, Miss Lizzie Barron. <laughs> oh, and next week, Miss Lizzie Barron shall buy her dream house in Camberley. Oh, Eric, I've saved every penny from my paintings to be able to buy that house. I'm so happy. You deserve it, Lizzie. Lizzie stood with clasped hands, eager eyes, and parted lips before the snowy pile of illusion that was the last daintily lifted out upon the bed. Then, as Telia the maid displayed its loveliness and arranged the dress to the best effect, Lizzie cried with pleasure. Oh, how wonderful! But then, Tilia uttered a shriek and began to burrow wildly in the box, crying distractedly. Ah, oh, great heavens, madame! The wreath has been forgotten! Oh no! The dress without the wreath is meaningless! Why don't you wear a natural one? To have a wreath made that goes with the dress in a day is impossible! Let's ransack the city till we find some! And so, Eric and Lizzie drove off, resolved to have her flowers whether there were any or not. They looked for it everywhere, and when Lizzie was about to give up in despair, a shopkeeper suggested that perhaps the Frenchwoman, Estelle Valnor, might make the desired wreath in the short time. When Lizzie and Eric entered the shop of Estelle Valnor, Lizzie told the woman all about her tale. It is impossible to make the wreath today as all my girls are engaged to trim a bridesmaid's dress and must be sent away at once. But perhaps you may find the desired flowers to go with your dress at Miss Burton's. Her niece has been helping me with garlands and wreaths. Lizzie hurried away with a last hope faintly stirring in her heart. Lizzie went to Miss Burton's, which was a little shop. At the one window sat a young girl, her lap full of flower leaves and petals. She rose slowly as Lizzie came in. Lizzie's anxious face cleared suddenly, and her voice lost its impatient tone. Miss Belle? Yes? Lizzie was shocked to see Belle in the small shop in ragged clothes. This is not how she had remembered her Miss Belle who came from one of the richest families in London. Miss Bell, I'm Lizzie. I worked at Madame Tiffany's. You gave me your boots. You don't remember me and never knew my name, but I have never forgotten you in all these years. Oh, uh, yes. I remember now. How are you? I, I'm wonderful, Miss Bell. The bouquet you gave me changed my life. You see, when I was heading back to Madame Tiffany's with the bouquet in my hand, a kind lady, Mrs. Barron, came up to me and said she wanted to buy the flowers and I gave them to her without taking her money. She was very pleased and thanked me. A week later, she came by Madame Tiffany's and adopted me. I came to Camberley with her and lived here ever since. But, uh, if I may, how are you here? Belle looked at Lizzie for a moment and then said, My father suffered a big loss in business and we had to sell everything we owned to recover from the debts. My parents couldn't take it. 
When they passed, my aunt, Miss Burton, took me into her custody. We moved from city to city, eventually settling down here last year. She passed last month, leaving this shop to me. I'm so sorry. It's fine. I enjoy working here. The delicate handiwork gets me nearly enough to pay my way. But you look unwell. I am fine. Now enough about me. What brings you to my shop? Lizzie thought for a moment and then putting her hand on Belle's, told her all about the wreath. And you need it tomorrow. That night, Lizzie stared out the window, looking at the star-studded sky, thinking about Belle. Life had been kind to her, but to Belle, it had been cruel. The next evening, she put on the dress and uncovered the box that a little boy from Belle's shop had got for her. Ah! The wreath looked beautiful, and when it was carefully arranged on Lizzie's head, she blushed with pleasure. Then she gave a sealed envelope to the little boy and asked him to give it to Belle. The boy left and Lizzie stepped out of the house where Eric awaited her. You look beautiful. Thank you, not just for the compliment and everything you do for me, but also helping me secure the house in a day. Hey, whatever makes you happy. But if I may, what about your dream? Ah, uh, I will get there eventually, as long as you are with me. I love you, Eric. I love you more. And off they went to the ball, holding hands and smiling at each other. Back at the shop, Belle opened the envelope that Lizzie had sent to her. Confused, she removed the document from inside it. Tears rolled down her cheeks as she read the document. It was a property paper that said that her house in London now belonged to her. Beside it, there was a note from Lizzie that read, Thank you for everything. This is a small gesture of returning your kindness that you showered upon me that stormy afternoon, Miss Bell. Know that I will forever be grateful to you. P.S. The wreath is perfect. Pressing the paper to her chest, Belle cried with her eyes squeezed shut. In a world where she thought she was alone, a small deed from her past came back to her as a blessing. Lizzie and Belle became the best of friends, and when Lizzie got married to Eric, Belle was her maid of honor. <laughs>